Man, that turned out so much better than I thought it would. That is so sleek and modern right there. Hey gang, before this video gets started, dad and I just wanna say, that's awesome. We recently hit 100K. We couldn't have done it without you. We hit it like over a week ago. Thank you so much for all the support of our channel. I mean it from right here, guys. Super yeah, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it. We're not gonna stop at 100K either, gang. We're going to a million, at least two million. We got big goals for this channel and uh, we can't wait to show you guys what we have in store. That's right. In fact, in the background, behind the scenes, we've been cooking up a big announcement. We're gonna make it at the end of this video. It's gonna be- No, we're gonna make it right now. Oh, we're gonna make it right now. Yeah. All right. Let's go in there and show them. Let's go and show them. Welcome to the set, gang. Welcome to the set. Check we're, it out. We're starting a podcast. Another podcast. Are you kidding me, Stud Pat? Come on. I listen to enough podcasts already. I don't want to listen to YouTube jabber either more. That's the big announcement. Come on, guys. But that's the thing, gang, is the podcast isn't really about us. You guys see what we're working on. You see what we're doing. We post the videos. This podcast is really for you. It's about you. We want to see what projects you're working on and the specific struggles you're having with your projects. And we want to see if we can help you out. Yeah, because not everybody has a Paul, a Mr. Stud Pack that they can just call you know, three in the morning. Hey, I'm trying to hang this picture frame. I need help or maybe even something crazier than that. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to find help with challenges. So we just want to do our best and get the community involved uh, as much as possible to help out with this podcast. Because we have a lot of sharp and awesome people who watch our content. We do. And we don't want it to just stop at us. If we get sent in a problem, we want everybody to get involved, a collective mind almost. And uh, we want to start solving these problems. Like I said, it's hard to find help these days. That's right. And you know, it's different all over the United States. They do things Things differently in Vermont than we do it in Louisiana than they do it in Idaho. And we're not just hoping to offer our help. We are also looking to learn. We want to see how people are doing it in their parts of the country, in their parts of the world. Although we can't really help them with other parts of the world, but we'd love to see how you guys are doing it. And some parts of the United States feel like other parts of the world sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so to kick off the first podcast, Dad and I want you guys to send in any burning questions that you've had for him, for me, for both of us. We get a lot of questions like, do you ever cuss? Or, uh, you know, do, do we, we ever, ever argue? Yeah, yeah, so stuff like that. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Second of all, we want you guys to send us in a couple problems. If you guys have had problems you're struggling to solve, send them in, send pictures. That's right. And uh, where are they going to send them, Dad? You can send them to studpackpodcast at gmail.com. And our first podcast will drop on Labor Day weekend. So send them in quick. It's going to give us time to prepare. And we'll see you uh, Labor Day weekend. But right now, let's head back to that TV niche. Let's do it. Hey gang, it's Paul with Slip Pack. Welcome back to our channel. We're back on our entertainers remodel and we can see the finish line, gang. We have about three more videos on this project. One of them is gonna be a huge bookcase that came in this morning on that back wall, like eight feet tall, $3,000. It wouldn't even fit through the front door. We're gonna cut that thing in half and show you how we get it in the house. We also have this stick holding up the peninsula. We can't leave it like that. We have an unbelievable custom unique solution for that. We're actually filming part of that video later today. Make sure you stay tuned for that. But today's video is selling this TV in the niche. I've hung hundreds of TVs on the wall. I remember the very first one I did, it was a big old plasma. Remember plasma TVs? They were all the rage in the early 2000s. And that thing was heavy. It had a quarter inch plate glass. And I think we had eight lag bolts going into the framing wow. to hold that thing up. Now, one person can basically lift a TV the same size right out of the box. While there are a lot of similarities between putting a TV on a wall and putting a TV in a niche, there are some differences also. And there's not a lot of content out there either regarding putting a TV in a niche. So we're gonna figure this out as we go. Rig it, you're gonna come along for the ride, but the first thing we gotta do is figure out, does our TV fit in the opening? Did we even frame this thing properly? Let's go get the TV, get it out of the box, see if it fits. All right, got our 32 inch Samsung right here. Let's see if it fits. Oh, look at that. Hey. Like a glove. Now that we know it fits, let's get it mounted to the wall. My original plan was to take a wall bracket for the TV, mount it in the niche, hook the TV on there, we're done. Easy, just like we've all done at our house. But then I realized the TV is gonna stick out too far. I wanted the screen almost flush with the wall for a nice, clean, modern look. So how are we gonna do that? On the back of all flat screens, we got four holes right here. We're gonna take advantage of those, put this threaded stud in there, just like that. Drill four holes in the back of the niche, push the TV in there as far back as we can and scrap the bracket idea. Now, where did I get this guy? I made it. Let's go outside and I'm gonna show you how. Already getting out here in the rain, which seems like the 60th day in a row for rain out here, but I wanna cut this threaded rod. Now, all I did, I took the screws that came with the TV, or in your case, the screws that came with the bracket, whatever fits that thread in the back of the TV. Use the thread gauge to determine the pitch, or just take it to a hardware store or a home center, and they'll help you out. Mine was M4, 
they're almost always metric and I had to get some M4 threaded rod and I had to go to a bolt specialty house here in town. They helped me out, they hooked me up and I'm gonna show you how to cut this threaded rod. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book. I've got a nut there and a nut there and I'm gonna make my cut between those two nuts. I'm grabbing hold of it with some vice grips and yes, that will damage the threads, but we don't need those threads in that part of the bolt anyway. Let's put it right here on this table saw and we're just gonna cut it off. Now you need a pretty fine tooth hacksaw for that. Make sure you get that. I'm gonna grab a file and I'm gonna clean up the end and I'm gonna try to round it over a little bit. I'm not holding the file square. I'm attacking it at a slight angle from all the way around. Now that I filed that round, we're gonna take the nut off. And as you take the nut off, it's gonna reform those threads. So it spins on and off real nice. And there we go. And now you had to make those four studs. Let's go put them on the back of the TV and put that TV on the wall. All right, guys, we got our four studs put in the holes. Now let's talk about transferring this hole pattern to our wall. When we had the TV in the rough opening, I had about a quarter inch reveal all the way around between the frame and the wall, or about six millimeters. I'm gonna put this square against the top edge of the TV and measure from it to the center of this top stud. And I'm at about 79 millimeters. If I wanna have a six millimeter gap, I need to be at 85. 79 plus six, 85 millimeters. That's the center of this hole from the top of my niche. Now that we know the top measurement, we need to know the sideways measurement. And don't assume these are in the middle. On this TV, this is 31 centimeters and this is 32 centimeters. So we're gonna account for that when we lay out our holes. And these are also on a 10 centimeter square. 10 centimeters that way, 10 centimeters that way. Now that we have all those numbers, let's transfer them to the wall and we can drill that wall and mount our TV. So as you can see, we've already done some work here. We assume that the holes in the back of the TV were in the center of the TV, but they're not. They're shifted five millimeters to one side. So all we did, we took our 31 centimeters, which is the edge of the TV to the center of the stud on the left, added our six millimeter reveal, and you can see we're at 31.6 centimeters to the middle of that hole. And we're 85 centimeters down. That's our measurement on the top. Once we had that hole, just use a level, get a level line, come over 10 centimeters and pick up that one. Straight down, 10 centimeters, pick up those two. So now that we have our holes drilled in the right location, let's get the TV mounted and check our reveal. All right, that looks fantastic. What do you think, Jordan? I think it looks awesome, man. We have the even reveal all the way around, super clean, great measurements, great job. It's sleek and modern look, perfect for this house. Before we put the hardware on there and mount that thing permanently, we gotta wire that thing up. Let's head in the pantry and let's figure out where to drill the hole through this wall and get all the wires to the back of that TV. As you can see in the pantry, we've got the four studs sticking through the wall right here. We're gonna clean that up, make it look great. And we need a hole through this wall into the back of the TV. Now all the inputs are on this side, my left on the TV. So we want the hole somewhere over here. I really don't want it under this shelf because now the cables have to come either around the shelf or through the shelf. But I think if we put the hole somewhere where these crystal light boxes are, we can come straight out, maybe use this bracket, this brace to attach some kind of wire management as we head up here, plug in the TV, plug in the cable box and attach the coax right there. Nice clean look. Let's take some measurements, pull that TV off the wall and drill that hole through the wall for all the wires. All right, easy. That's a two inch hole. Why two inch? Because we're gonna use this grommet. I love these things. You'll often see them in office furniture for cable management. It requires a two inch hole and it's gonna go on the pantry side. And then as you notice right here, we've got our two screws already put in there to fit in these keyhole slots in the back of our cable box. It's gonna go on the wall just like that. And the remote does work and the cables come right through here and right into the back of the TV. Now that we have our mounting holes drilled, our wiring hole drilled, our cable box mounted, let's run some wires and get a picture going on this TV. Let's do it. All right, it's all rough wired. Let's head around the corner and see if we got a picture on this thing. Wow, well, look at that. Nice waterfall. That looks beautiful. I would probably leave that on all day, 24-7, 365 if I could. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's like moving artwork. But if you leave it on all the time, then that would generate a lot of heat though. It would, and we're gonna address that. But say you turn it off and now you have a black screen. Maybe you don't wanna see a black screen. Well, there are all kinds of ways to cover a TV in a niche that are a lot easier 
than covering your TV that's on a big old bracket sticking off the wall. I've seen them where they have a picture over here and the picture slides up or slides down That'd to be expose cool. the TV or shutters. All kind of innovative ways you could do that. You could trim it out? Some kind of a message board over that. You slide it out of the way. Message boards work great in the kitchen. And Jordan mentioned heat. Obviously this TV being in a niche like this, it can't breathe. And a bigger TV is gonna generate more heat. What can happen to these, Jordan, if there's too much heat behind that TV? Well, when the heat gets concentrated on the television, it's gonna significantly decrease the life of the TV because there's technology inside the TV, obviously, the mirrors and stuff like that. It's just gonna warp your picture. Over time, it's gonna to start to look really bad and you're gonna to have to replace it in probably a year or two. So we have an awesome way that we're gonna ventilate this TV. We're gonna pull nice cool air out of that dark pantry, blow it in behind the TV, and it's gonna exhaust around the perimeter and take all that heat with it. From over here, we picked up these cool fans, no pun intended, dual fans into one controller and one USB. This plugs into the USB on the TV. When you power up the TV, the fans come on. Right on. When, when you shut the TV off, there's a little delay and the fans power off. Perfect solution for this. So we're gonna pull the TV out of the wall and figure out the location and mount these fans and drill some big holes through that wall. All right, Jordan and I were just messing around with the fan locations. We kind of like it right there. Now, obviously, they're going to be way back here inside the pantry, pushing air against the back of the TV. We've determined that the center of the fan is an inch below the bottom stud and eight inches to the left or right of these side studs. Let's go over here to the wall. All we have to do now, come down one inch over eight, down one inch over eight, drill two holes and mount our fans. And the only thing we have to account for is the shelves in the pantry. We're gonna clear those, so I'm gonna head out to the truck, get my hole saws, and we're gonna drill these two big holes all the way through this wall. All right, we've got our two holes drilled, and we're gonna talk about this notch here in a second, but first I wanna talk about that big right angle drill I use. A lot of guys say, why don't you just use your cordless? Well, when I was drilling this hole with my right angle drill, the clutch engage, it's never done that. That's what does that how, mean? That's how much torque is required to drill that hole. It would have ripped that little cordless drill right out of my hand, so I always use a big right angle drill when I'm drilling big circles like that. So this little notch right here is so we can slide the fan in from this direction. We wanted all this wiring to be on this side of the opening behind the TV. We didn't want you to see it in the pantry. And it looked out and that the airflow is this way also. So that little notch is gonna allow us to pass the fan through this way, mount it in the pantry, and then the corner of the fan will cover up that notch and you'll never see it. Good thinking. Yep. It's also got some cabinet screws, painted them black, they're dry. So why don't we mount those fans and let's see if they work. Let's do it. All right, that looks awesome. I love the way that looks and no wires. That's gonna be so cool to come in the pantry, see those fans running and know we did a good job. Super high tech. Yep, now you also see we added this little block right here. There's a couple of reasons for that. The two nuts on the top were bearing against this cleat. The two on the bottom were bearing against the, the, uh, the drywall. I wanted them all on the same plane. So we made that little block and that looks a lot better. Now, I think the fans are done. I think they look great, but Jordan thinks they need a little more work. He wants to trim them out in some trim, and that's in his DNA, gang. He got that from me, so I'm not gonna fight him on that. Let's head out to the saw, make two little trim rings, and apply them over the fans. glue <laughs> i'm serious who needs glue oh yeah man yeah come on all right i agree come they look, on they look better everybody's favorite molding quarter round <laughs> <laughs> it actually looks good right there it does 
Sweet. We were gonna glue this on, but yeah. I think a friction fit is all you need. That's all we and need. in case you have to service the fans, just pull them right off. That's right. All right, trim looks great. We are on our way to getting this thing done. And you can also see, we got the grill put on here so no tea bags get sucked into that fan. So the next step, the thing I wanna do next is put this grommet in here. So that means we gotta pull all the wires one more time and install that grommet. Let's clean let's, them up. Yep, let's go grab it and pull those wires and get it done. Check it out, gang, that looks pretty clean. I actually bought two of those grommets and we figured out that if I put one in from one side and one from the other, they dress up that interior of that hole very nicely. It's a little thick. In other words, there was a little gap here. So we just caulked it here and on the other side. And we'll put one of these caps on the pantry side to dress it up even further. So I think it's time to head back in that pantry and feed all those wires back through here one more time and hook up that TV. Let's get those cables out of there. I'm ready. Alrighty, gang. The grommet came out great. Check that out, nice and clean. These three wires here, I'm gonna gather them together, put them in a strap on that wood and get them out of the way so they don't get hurt. Let's go around the corner one more time and check out all the wires behind the TV. We've got them zip tied together. And like I said, they're just gonna be tucked in behind the TV. There's plenty of room, you'll never see them. So I'm gonna grab the TV, Jordan's gonna wire them up. Let's turn that TV on one more time. And that came out fantastic. I feel like I'm part of the picture. This TV is unbelievable. I love the way that it's in this niche and becomes part of this wall. If I put my hand right here, I can feel the air coming out of there. Those are on medium speed, two of them. It's coming out all the way around, getting rid of that heat. And getting rid of that heat is gonna be good for this TV. It's gonna make it last much longer. Yeah, we probably added two, three years on this thing's lifespan. At least. Now let's head into the pantry. I'm gonna show you a couple more things in here. Boom, there's our light. The only wires you see on this whole setup are the three right there. Fantastic job, Jordan. And remember, we're gonna put some wire management right there, tuck them in against the, uh, the shelf. Little raceway. Yep, got everything painted here. I probably will come back, trim these off, maybe even put an acorn nut on there so nobody gets cut by the end of that bolt. Paint them white. Yep, sign it, put a stud pack sticker right there maybe. Right. Now let's go back out here. I wanna talk about something that we learned through this whole process and what I might do different the next time we do this. So with a niche TV, obviously you have to have access to the back. It has to be a pantry, has to be a closet, something like that. If I had to do it again, and we probably will now, instead of a niche, I'd build an opening, a window, all the way through, wrap in drywall, corner bead, everything. Then when we're ready to put the TV in, mount it to a piece of plywood, which you can easily cut all your openings in with a router or hole saws or jigsaw, whatever. Do all your wire management, paint it, mount the TV to the plywood, and then from the back side, push the TV into the opening, get it perfectly centered, and then fasten the plywood to your framing around the opening. And you could even paint the plywood black if you wanted, or the wall color, but that looks great. Ours is the wall color, but it's so dark in there, it looks black. And then if you did it that way, you could also fill in from the back. Right. So you would have all the guts exposed and you could fill it in. Right. Or if you want to go for that, you know, technical look, yeah. you can leave the guts exposed. And the other advantage of doing it that way, if the TV stuck out a little bit and we wanted even further back, we could pad out between the drywall on the backside and the plywood and push it back. That's true. Like if you had a mount on it and you wanted this thing to come out and turn, but then push back flush with the piece of plywood, you could mount it further back into the niche and accommodate that. That's true. And, the, and what I would change, this is just for me personally, is I might put some lights back here. So you get a little bit of a glow effect. Right. And then also I would take it one step further. I would make the fans... I would make, I would buy LED fans. There you go, that'd be cool. Yeah, I know you yeah I, that's what I would, but we're gonna be doing this yeah. again 100%. So as you saw, our cable box is behind the TV and it is not line of sight. So if you have a cable box or something that is line of sight, you need to make plans to mount it so the, the uh, remote control can see your cable box. Maybe even a storage little niche yeah. right here, something a little mini underneath. niche, yeah. A niche for the box, there yep. you go. All things that we learned through the process. Yeah, but I'm gonna step back, enjoy the waterfall. That's awesome. All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. Now it's easier making a video when you've done something a hundred times, but it's harder to film what you're doing when you're still trying to figure out what you're doing. And now that you've seen how we tackle this project, now you can apply it to your house. And if you wanna put a TV in a niche just like this, you're all set. We got a lot of sharp viewers 
If you do something a little different, your own little tips and tricks, let us know in the comments below. Somebody's gonna read that later on and apply it to their own house and you're gonna help them out. So now that you know how to put electronics in a niche, you know what I'm gonna say, you need to put that like button in a niche, make sure it's well ventilated and cool, smash it for us, drop us some comments, ask a question, and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you on our next video.